Are you struggling to soothe your baby or child's eczema? You're not alone. Up to 20% of children suffer from this itchy red skin condition. And in this video, I'll uncover the truth about eczema and babies and children and give you advice on how you can help them. From causes to treatments, I'll answer questions that I get asked every day by parents who come to my skin clinic. Watch now and take the first steps towards relief. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Finbar, and on this channel, I explore how we learn to love the skin we are in so that we can live happier, healthier, and more joyful lives. What does eczema look like in babies and young children? Well, in children with lighter skin, eczema appears as red, dry, itchy skin. And in children with darker skin, eczema may appear as darker patches or sometimes as lighter patches. In both light and dark skin, eczema will feel rough to the touch and tends to fade out at the edges. Now, it often starts with the flexor surface of the arms and the legs and also can affect the face. And that's very important to treat. And I'll talk more about why that is later on. As the skin's dry, it will get itchy. And when this child scratches, they make the rash worse. And this can cause breaks in the skin, increasing the risk of infection and also can cause thickening of the skin. So it's really important to keep your child's fingernails short. And sometimes you might need to put their hands into cotton mittens at night after applying moisturizers. What causes eczema in children? Well, eczema is caused by a combination of factors, genetic and environmental. It's not contagious. The condition runs in families and can be linked to other conditions such as wheezing and asthma, allergies and hay fever. Now doctors sometimes group these conditions together under the term atopy. And so you may have been told in the past that your child has atopic eczema. Now in babies and children, eczema can be linked to a problem in a skin protein called filaggrin which leads to a problem in the skin barrier. And this means that the skin cells aren't held together as tightly as they should be. If you imagine a brick wall, now that represents the skin of a person with eczema. Normally this wall would be strong and sturdy, providing a solid barrier to protect the body. However, in a child or anyone with eczema, the bricks in this wall have become damaged and have gaps between them, much like how the skin cells in eczema have gaps in their protective barrier. And to make matters worse, there's no plaster to fill in these gaps and patch up the wall. In the skin, this equates to a reduced oily barrier and means that fluid evaporates out from the skin, leaving it very dry and vulnerable to the outside elements like irritants, allergens and infections getting in. And just like a brick wall with gaps and no plaster can crumble and fall apart, so too can the skin and eczema become inflamed, itchy and painful. Will my baby grow out of eczema? Well, it's impossible to predict whether a child will grow out of eczema or not. Eczema is a chronic condition with periods where it flares up and then it settles again. And many children do eventually grow out of eczema as they age. In about two thirds of children, the eczema will have cleared up by the age of seven. And that goes up to about three quarters of children becoming clear from eczema by the age of 16. Unfortunately, it's not always easy to predict which children will outgrow their eczema and which won't. However, we do know that children with more severe eczema tend to have a harder time getting rid of it. Is food allergy a problem for babies or children with eczema? This is a question I get asked a lot. Food allergies are a rare cause of eczema in older children and adults. However, in the younger children under the age of three, Food allergies may be a factor if they have moderate to severe eczema, along with wheezing or digestive symptoms such as vomiting or diarrhea. Unfortunately, there's no simple test to determine if certain foods are causing eczema flare-ups. Your healthcare professional may suggest trying an elimination diet where any food if suspected of causing allergy is removed from the child's diet for a period of time. It's actually more likely that a child with eczema, especially on the cheeks, can develop a food allergy because of the eczema rather than the eczema being caused by a food allergy. You see, as your baby gets a bit older and starts to feed itself, the food will go everywhere. And if there's a broken skin barrier in the face, and remember back to that analogy with the poorly packed uh, bricks in the wall, tiny amounts of the food can penetrate through the skin into the bloodstream, missing the digestive tract. And this leads to the immune system seeing this food in the bloodstream and thinking, oh, this food is a foreign invader. And so it sets up an allergic response to it. So treating your child's eczema is really important to prevent allergy in the future, especially especially if the eczema is on their face. So I hope you're enjoying the content today. And if you are, YouTube would love to know by you hitting that like button. That'll help me out greatly. Cheers.
How should you treat eczema? Firstly, it's important to avoid all the things that trigger the eczema. Irritants such as soaps or bubble baths, detergents and contacts with other chemicals. Avoid your child getting overheated as the increased blood flow to the skin can cause more itching and scratching. Now, certain materials worn next to the skin, such as wool and synthetic fibres, can also aggravate eczema. So stick to soft, fine weave clothing, fine weave clothing, or natural materials such as cotton. Now, there are some specific garments made from cotton or silk, specifically designed for children with eczema, and you may wish to talk to your healthcare provider or your pharmacist about these. Which is the best emollient for my baby? Now, I'm going to use the words emollient and moisturiser interchangeably here. Emollients and moisturisers are both used to hydrate the skin. Now, they do work in slightly different ways, but it's not that important here. Emollients are really important for treating eczema. You, you can't manage eczema effectively without them. Remember back to that analogy with the broken dry wall with no plaster? Well, emollients and moisturisers act like the plaster over the cracks in that wall. They provide a surface film of oil, which increases the hydration in the skin and repairs the break in the skin barrier. Studies have shown that using lots of emollients can help reduce the need for topical steroids, which I'm going to talk about next. It's really important to use your moisturizers regularly and as prescribed to see the best results. So sometimes you might need to try a few different emollients before you find the one that works best for your child. Generally, ointments work better. Your baby or small child is less likely to complain about how sticky these are compared with an older child. But creams and gels also work very well and lotions are mainly used only for washing or for very hairy areas. Moisturisers should be gently rubbed into the skin until they're no longer visible and they should be applied downwards in the direction of the hairs to lessen the risk of folliculitis. A link to a video below in the description on how to apply moisturisers in young children. I can't stress how important meticulous hand washing is before putting on the moisturiser on your child. As I said earlier, eczema can lead to the development of an allergy and that can be introduced if you have some food material on your hands so please wash your hands carefully before putting your emollients onto your child. Can I use steroid creams on my baby? I'm afraid they'll thin the skin. That's another question I get asked a lot. So steroid creams and ointments can be prescribed by a healthcare professional for a baby or child with eczema. However, long-term use of steroid creams can cause side effects such as thinning of the skin if too strong a steroid is used for too long a period of time. So it's important to use the lowest effective dose and follow the advice of your healthcare professional. In my experience, in both children and adults, it's more effective and safer to hit hard using more potent treatments for a few days and then use less potent treatments over a longer period of time. There's new evidence out on the effectiveness of using twice weekly steroids topically in those children who flare a lot. Most of the studies have looked at use on Saturday and Sunday, two days in a row, to prevent flare-ups of eczema. Now this is similar to how asthmatic children will use their steroid puffer to prevent flare-ups in their asthma. And this study also confirms the safety and effectiveness of this twice weekly steroid topically in children who get frequent flare-ups. Another question I get asked a lot is, how often should I bathe my baby? If your baby has eczema, a daily bath with an emollient will help soothe and moisturize the skin. Avoid using soaps and keep the bath time short as hot water and long baths can actually dry out the skin. There's a few specific emollients that you can put into the water instead of soap and these can be very helpful. After you've taken your child out of the bath, you can either let them drip dry or pat them gently. If you rub it hard with a dry towel, this can cause more itching and uh, breaks in the skin. After they have come out of the bath, that's a really good time to apply more moisturiser. Does bottle feeding cause eczema? Well, no. Eczema is caused by genetic factors, as I've said earlier, and bottle feeding a baby doesn't cause eczema. Breastfeeding is always a great option when possible, but there's mixed evidence about its impact on eczema. Some studies suggest it can have positive effects, while others show no real significant difference. Nevertheless, I still encourage mothers to breastfeed if they can. What about probiotics? Well, studies are now showing that taking probiotics while pregnant or giving them to your child can help prevent eczema and other allergy related conditions. This review looked at the effectiveness of probiotics during pregnancy and early childhood on eczema and other allergies. It found that taking the probiotics, especially a combination of specific strains, can lower the risk of getting eczema. 
And mothers who took probiotics during their pregnancy also had a lower risk of their children getting eczema. Probiotics seem to be most effective for preventing eczema up to two years of age and on reducing atopic eczema symptoms after the age of one. Taking a probiotic supplement during pregnancy or giving one to your child might be a good option for helping prevent eczema in infants, particularly if you have other children with eczema or if you or the baby's dad has had eczema when you were a child. I should also say that the science and evidence on probiotics is growing, but there does seem to be a few specific strains of probiotics which help the skin more than others. And I've linked to a couple of specific products which contain those strains in the description below. Is there anything else I should watch out for? Well, Staphylococcus aureus is a type of bacteria commonly found on the skin and in the nasal passages of healthy people, but it can also cause infections. It's very often present in the skin of people with atopic eczema. And what you gotta watch out for is a sticky ooze, which can mean the skin actually sticks to clothes and bed sheet and forms a yellow crust on the skin. When this happens, antibiotics either in topical form or orally may be required. Another thankfully rare but very painful and serious infection is called eczema herpeticum. This is where the cold sore virus, herpes simplex, can cause painful widespread rash in a child with eczema and it gets, it gets in due to the broken skin barrier. Now this can develop extremely quickly and it's potentially a medical emergency requiring antiviral medication. Now I know this advice may sound a bit harsh but it's important to avoid close contact or kissing your baby or child if you have an active cold sore, especially if your child has eczema. What should I do if my child's eczema is severe? Well, if your child's eczema is severe, seek advice from a healthcare professional. They may prescribe a combination of emollients and steroid creams to manage the condition. So thank you for watching and learning more about eczema in babies and children. I hope you found this video useful in understanding the causes, symptoms and treatment options available. If you found this video informative, please give it a thumbs up and share it with other parents who may find it useful. If you have any further questions or suggestions for future topics, please let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more informative videos so that you can learn to love the skin that you are in. Yours in health.